a question about the emerging effects of the emerging treatments. There's been a lot of debate in the U.S. about whether or not there's sufficient evidence for both remdesivir and for chloroquine. So I was wondering if you would discuss what evidence you see to use both treatments and also given the limited qualities of quantities of both treatments, how should we give it to patients? For example, should we give it to patients only once they're severely ill and on ventilators or can we give it earlier when they're just starting to see the decline in the oxygen saturation? Uh, I'll say something first. Uh, by our experience, actually, this disease is uh, quite quite uh, hard to treat uh, just because we are in charge of the ICU ward here in, uh, in Wuhan. Uh, we have a lot of people, a, a lot of patients who are really critically ill and were on ventilation machines. Uh, the, the mortality is relatively high, more than 50%, we have to admit. Uh, uh, generally, there is a lack of uh, effective, uh, method, uh, effective measures uh, to save their lives despite a standardized bundle of uh, ICU treatments. Some people can recover, uh, but uh, a lot of patients, we, we have lo lost a lot of patients. Uh, however, on the, on the light end, uh, on the you know, mild disease end, uh, f uh, we, don't, we, we are not in charge of them, but uh, we have no some information given by our colleagues uh, outside our hospital. Um, the, the, the prognosis are generally uh, okay, okay for those patients. Uh, most of them will, will recover. Uh, some of them will turn into severe disease or critical disease, but the ratio we believe is not that high. Uh, in terms of treatment, uh, we've talked about the ICU patients. Uh, well, for the mild disease patients, it's um, generally a self-limiting disease. Uh, uh, they ha there are clinical trials in terms of uh, uh, antiviral drugs. Uh, also, they empirically used uh, ostam Ostamiva and other antiviral stuff, uh, but generally we believe they did, not, they did not make a very big difference. Uh, due to the self-limiting nature of this disease in mild forms. Any, any information from Dr. Tom? Um, are you mentioning the drug of uh, hydroxychloroquine? Yes, yes. Yeah. And the other drug you mentioned it was? Chloroquine. Remdesivir. Oh, the remdesivir. Antibody. Okay. So um, actually, Dr. Fan ha has already introduced uh, what we have done in clinical practice. and. Uh, I just want to add a few sentences because a recent published article from France, uh, the newly published one, um, testing the chloroquine in treating mild phase patients. Actually, there is a similar uh, clinical trial uh, which was published around early March, which was done in China, that testing only chloroquinone, uh, not combined with uh, enzymomyosin. Um, but the different the results of the two studies were not very consistent. In the Chinese trial, uh, the, med uh, the trial showed that the, uh, the, the, the team using the cl uh, cl chloroquinones are not, uh, compared with those with uh, controls have no obvious differences in the symptoms, subsides, or um, others, other measures, uh, other indicators. But in the studies from France, there seems to be a quite improvement uh, significant improvement for those using this drug. So, but to, uh, both, for both trials, the uh, sample number is not very huge, only tens of cases. Um, from our experience in clinical practice, um, those drugs, if can have ev any efficacy, might be only be used at the initial phase of this disease. At the end or late stage, most of the injuries are actually caused by the um, now, other mechanisms, including the inflammatory uh, syndromes, uh, other mechanisms that causing multi-organ uh, multi uh, injuries. So at that time, those injuries are not directly caused by the virus, though the effect of the virus cannot be fully ruled out. So at the late or critically ill patients, the results of the treatment actually depends on what kind of comprehensive treatment you are using. And for resident uh, remdesivir, uh, we are still in the clinical trial to show if it, it will have efficacy for those patients. We have two registered clinical trials, one for mild phase patients and the other for critically ill uh, patients. And the initial results are uh, anticipated in about April, I think. At that time, we may have more information to evaluating these drugs. 
<laughs> and how much uh, permanent lung damage are you seeing? I saw one study that showed that about 20% of patients had about a 20 or 30% reduction in lung function such that they would get out of breath and walking at a fast pace. Uh, well, uh, this is a good question. Uh, well, we haven't got uh, very authentic uh, data uh, concerning the, 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 uh, the ratio of uh, frequency of uh, different symptoms, including short of breath. Um, well, uh, just because, you know, as a pulmonologist, the, the symptoms of a uh, respiratory system can be variable uh, due to different persons. Uh, so, uh, Another indicator which can be used here is uh, the, the presentation on CT. Uh, generally, uh, the majority of patients uh, with a positive PCR test uh, have some abnormality on CT. Uh, some of them, especially the mild form, uh, can resolve uh, in a certain period of time, uh, let's say one month. But some of them, uh, maybe they can recover, but they have scars or reticulation left. And, um, in critical ear patients, uh, the lung damage is very severe. Um, and uh, there are scars left on the lung uh, due to CT scanning. Uh, well, another, da another data we can, we can quote here is uh, uh, published by the World, World Health Organization. They say the severe form of uh, COVID-19, the ratio is about 13% to 15%. Um, well, by their definition, severe cases are people with hypoxemia uh, and also CT abnormality. Uh, maybe 15, around 15% 15 of people will experience certain amount of uh, short of breath or, or uh, objective damage of oxygenation, uh, of, of, of hypoxemia. Uh, this should be a, a, a good estimation about the ratio of people. 